Good evening, everybody. It's October 4th. You're listening to the October Country Podcast. We're going to try something a little different tonight. Instead of talking about a movie that has a Halloween theme, we're going to talk about an object. We're going to talk about something that is almost synonymous with Halloween. Yes, the classic child's plastic vampire fang set. Now you're asking yourself, Jim Towns, are you really going to do a five-minute podcast about children's vampire fangs? (laughs) Yes, I am. Because I'm fascinated by them, and when I'm done with this, you will be too. Because these things are a mystery. First of all, I've done some research, and this model of vampire fangs goes back at least to the early 70s in the United States, and the mold for them has not changed. You can notice it specifically in a close-up of it when you see there's a middle fang on the top and the bottom of each uh, each set of the, the fangs. Human beings have bilateral teeth. That means we have two front teeth. There's a split down the middle. That's why you have the middle of your front teeth. These things are inaccurately made. They're anatomically incorrect. Whoever made them, and we're gonna get into that in a little bit, obviously didn't seem to care that much that there was a, a middle tooth. Now, in modern times, these fangs come in all sorts of different colors, all sorts of different, you know, varieties. You can get them in black, green, orange, purple, red, all sorts of great Halloween colors, in addition to the original white. But here's the thing, even those colored modern versions of them are still the same mold. This one single mold has been being used and reused and reused for going on 40 years now. So here's my question. Who molded these? Where did these come from? Again, I've done some research. I've actually called Oriental Trading Company. I've called some other toy manufacturers. No one knows. The original creator, person, man, woman, company, what have you, of these classic vampire fangs is a mystery, an enigma. We don't know. We don't know where they come from. We don't know who created them. We don't know who invented them. All we know is that Despite how cheap they are, there are a lot of them. They've been selling a lot for a lot of years. My guess is somebody is owed some money, but that's just me. So for tonight's episode of October Country, I give you the classic, endemic, vampire child's plastic toy fangs. Sure, they're no fun to wear. Sure, they've been improved upon quite a bit by other makeup companies that have molded fangs now that look a lot more realistic. Sure, they don't fit adults, and sure, even if you do stick them in your mouth, you're going to slobber all over yourself, and it's going to be generally an unpleasant, gross, plasticky tasting experience. But with that being said, they do, to me, represent Halloween. They're a part of my memories of growing up and pretending to be a vampire, not just at Halloween, but, you know, pretty much all throughout the year as well. And because of that, I think they deserve a place today on this episode of October Country. So thank you for listening. If you have any clues, if you have any knowledge about where these came from, please hit me up, let me know. Post it in the comments, send me a message. I would love to learn more about these because I'm not done trying to figure out the mystery of the plastic child's vampire fangs. That's this episode for tonight. I appreciate you listening. My name is Jim Towns. This is the October Country Podcast. We'll see you tomorrow.